Hi there, welcome to Agile Tech. This channel is dedicated to teaching young programmers how to program step by step from scratch. And we teach general computer tricks and tips. We also teach you creative design, how to use Photoshop and other Adobe products to design amazing stuff. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a very basic and simple website using HTML, CSS, and then PHP. So what you can see right now is just a basic web page. I'm going to show you how we can do this and then include a header. So we'll use PHP include statement to, to include the header on every other page. So basically that's what we are going to do in this tutorial. Remember to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to turn on the notification bell in order to get updates anytime we upload a new content. So we're going to do everything step by step. I'm going to show you how you can set up everything that you needed in order to have a simple web page just as this so the first thing we're going to do is because we are going to use php we need to have a web a warm server or it could be a zamp so you need the local server running in my case i'm using the warm server so i have a warm server running over here okay so we need to go and set up our working folder so the first thing i'm going to do is let me go to my drive c I'll go to my drive C and I'll locate my one folder here. So this is my one folder and what I need to do right now is to create a working folder over here. I'm going to create a working folder and let me just call it web page. So I'll call this folder web page. So I'm calling my web working for that web page that's basically what we are going to work with so when i type that that is what i use in writing my program so what we are going to do is because i've created a new folder my working folder what i need to do right now is to go to file go to open so what i'm going to do is that to locate that folder on my drive c i'm going to locate that folder in the www folder and i'm just going to open it so that web page this is what we are going to work with okay We are going to create the files that we are going to create files that we are going to work with. So what I need right now is to come down here. This is my working folder and first create a, a file. Okay, let me first create a folder called CSS. I want to save my CSS file over there. So I'm going to save my CSS file in this folder. Then I'll create another one called image. I want to have another folder. Okay, notice that if you click on this before going to your folder, it's going to create it as a subfolder. So in this case, I will deselect this and then click inside and I can now go and type what image. Okay. When I'm done with this, we basically need to have a header.php. We also need a footer.php. I'll show you how we can embed that using the include statement. So we need a footer.php. We basically need our index page. So let's create our index page index page and then our last two files we're going to create will be about dot php and then we also need contact contact dot php contact dot php and finally within my css let me create a css file so you notice i've selected my css folder and then i'll type star dot css so that is all i need in order to start working okay i also need to have the image that i'm going to work with i only need my logo for now so i think i have a, a folder here i'm going to copy my logo so this is a logo i'm going to work with i'll copy this logo i'll copy this logo just locate go back to my drive c and then paste this logo in my working folder okay so my folder is web page and I'll just paste this logo over here and if I come back to my text editor you, could, you notice I have the logo here so this is all we need in order to start programming okay to start writing our basic code to set up our web page what I'm going to do is that let me go to my index page and okay so let's set up our header we need to have a unique header just as we have over here so that is what we are going to do now basically we need to have a header like this this is what we are going to work with so let's go back here and just type localhost if you type localhost here you notice we're going to have the page 
our working folder down here so this is a web page this is what we're going to work with we are working with this particular folder so what we are going to do right now in order to access this folder let's just type slash web page okay right now you're not going to see anything you're just going to see an empty page like this we are going to start working and you see what exactly we are going to get so let me go back here and then over here i'm not going to set up my header the header of my website okay so i'm going to say this i'm just going to use this to generate my basic template for my website so if i hit tab key i should get something basic like this so let me say web page so i'll give a header and say web page okay so this is what i have now and i also need to link my css in order to link css we have three different ways in we can link css to a web page we can use the external internal and then inline i prefer using the inline the external css so in this case we are going to use the link keyword so when we come down here we just link our css so my css is in this folder so first i need to type css slash the start of css where which i created okay so we need to just go ahead and just type ahead so within my header file i need to embed my logo so i want to say okay first thing i want to make my logo a link as well i'm going to link my logo back to my home page so i can just say link and then within this link i'm going to link it to my index page so i can say index.php as simple as that and over here i'm going to embed my logo so my logo name is in my logo is in my image folder slash and then i'll pick my logo as simple as that so the alternative i'll just say what logo so let me just call this logo so we can just go to our home page and then load this page and see what is in order for this to appear it's supposed to show within our header page uh, show within our index page this is supposed to show within our index page in order to see this logo on our page if i go back and i load my page you will not see anything for now in order for me to have this logo appear on the page i need to link that within my index page so if i come back to my index page i can just use so if i come back to my index page i can just say use php statements can just include this over here and you can see what is exactly going to happen now so i'll just come down here and then use the include statement so i'll just include my header okay this is supposed to be in quotes so header header.php and this is php statement i need to terminate this now so I've included this on my index page. So if I go back and really, you notice now we have the logo appearing right on our web page as expected. So we need to go back and then work on our header. So we can go back here and then within our header now, we can come down here and then embed a nav bar. So we, go, we are going to have a navigation bar. So we call it nav. And within this nav, I'm going to have an ordered list. I'm going to have an ordered list and then within this list let me just give it a class and call that class let me see main link I'll call this one main link okay so within this link I'm going to have the list items so li means list items and I'm going to make this li I'm going to make them a link as well so I'm going to embed a link between them so I'm going to have it this way and the first one is going to be my index page index page dot php and i'll call this one what home and what i'm going to do i'm going to do is to select all this duplicate it just two more times and then control d will duplicate this so controlling d will duplicate this so i just have to just make few changes to this I'm just going to call this one about dot PHP and then I'll say about us about us and then I'll come down here and also say contact 
contact.php and over here I'll just say contact us call it contact us so we can go back and then reload our index page this will appear as well so we have all this appearing so we want to just see the last thing we will let's see let's add a new this thing in which we are going to improve on in the future we can say sign up you can say sign up.php so i just want to make show you something i just want to include some buttons so i'm going to bring that down here just after the euro but it's also going to be in the number so i'm going to say link so within this link i'm going to link this to a sign up form which i have over here sign up.php and over here the link i'm going to include the button so i'll include the button and i'll call that button name sign up or let me just call it register okay okay so this is exactly what i need now if i load this notice i've got register down here so this actually is going to link back to our sign up form which we'll create later on so let's try to do some adjustment and then align all this by using css so you're going to use css to line up what we've done so far you're going to use css to do that okay so let's start working using the css by styling our page so because i have linked css to the header all i need now is to go to my css file and the first thing i need to do is to format i need to actually format my page the browser have its own default settings so i can use the star keyword star and say i can set border i can use the border sizing and now this is going to be border box okay and we're also going to set our padding padding to zero we want to format everything as well as margin to what we are setting our margin also towards zero so this is exactly all we need for now and let's load our page and see the changes okay so you notice that there's some few changes happening now the next thing we need to do is to go ahead and target our ally we are going to target if we come back to our about page you notice that we have the link over here the ally we have them there this is also a link i want to target and then give them a font we want to have a font that we're going to work with so what we do right now is to go back to our css and then target the ally the anchor and the button so i'm going to target my ally the anchor and the what my button and then apply some few settings so if ally anchor element the button the font family so i'm going to give it a font family of so i prefer going with uh, area helvetica and then sans serif so i'm going to use this font for that and i'll just go ahead and then also give it a font size a font size of 16 i'll give the font size of 16 16 pixels okay and one well, of the last thing i'm going to ask or the last thing i'm going to add right now is add text decoration i'll set it to what none so i'm going to set my text decoration let's go back and load our page okay so you notice that text decoration the underlining everything is gone now so now let's target our header we want to use the flex box to display this to display everything so we're going to use the flex box property on our header so you notice over here i've created a header over here so we're going to target this header and display it as flex so we'll come down here and then say header and then display property we set it toward flex as simple as well. let's see what is going to happen now if i load this page okay so you see what is happening we'll display this flex and then it's showing in a different direction everything appears to be in the center the next thing we're going to do is to also justify we're going to use a justify center keyword and we're going to say that justify 
justify content we want to set it to a space between so we're going to use the space between keyword and let's see what is how it's going to look like so this is the space between so this is how this is going to look like we are using the space between keyword and let me zoom out a bit let's see what is happening okay so we'll go ahead we'll use the space between and then also let's use the align item center let's try to align everything to the center so let's say the keyword align items and then we we'll use the center keyword okay let's also load this and see okay so this appeared to be exactly in the center and i'm going to add some few padding to this let me add a pattern of 20 pixels. I'm going to add a pattern of 20 pixels to this. Pattern of 20 pixels. I'm going to set this to 20 pixels. And I want to bring a horizontal line below what I have now. So I want to sign a horizontal line below the border. So I'm going to say border bottom. So I will say border bottom. Border button, I'm going to say two pixels solid and I'm going to give it a gray color. So, gray color. So, let's load this. So, notice I have a gray color below my header now. That's exactly what I'm expecting. So, let's go ahead and then we cannot target our link. Notice we've created a link over within our header. We have I've set the UL that's an ordered list to main link. So let's target that and also do formatting to that. So remember to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to turn on the notification bell in order to get update anytime we upload new content. So what I'm going to do is that to say because this is a class, notice that we assign the header the UL as a class. So to call a class, we use a dot main class. We use a dot keyword. So we can say main main link this way and we'll go ahead and say we want to first use list star we want to display to none list star let's say what none and it removed that bulletin over here so list star we say what none okay so that's as expected we want to also target the li that's the list items and display them in side by side so we can use the inline block we can go ahead and say let's first target the main link and we target the li in there and we say what display let's call it inline block so we use the inline so that we display everything side by side we do it this way and you see what is happening now we are trying to display this line by line we are actually going to move this button to the far right okay we're actually going to list the button to the far right so let me come down here uh, within the header and we have this button down here and let me copy this button let me bring it after outside the nav bar so this should come within the header but outside the nav bar this way okay and i think this should be working should go to the side as expected exactly that's what we want now we've actually created everything we're going to go ahead and also what we need to do next all we need to do next is to target add some few padding let's add some few pardon pardon about 20 pesos okay the pardon we're going to add zero zero top and bottom and then 20 pesos 20 pesos left and right to our ally so we want to space side by side zero at the top and bottom and then 20 side by side okay so this is what we have so far as you can see we are gradually building our header and this is the header we want to use for every page and it's very going to be straightforward we are on our index page so far but we've used the include statement if I actually use the include statement to include this header on our index page and it's doing the magic for us so every changes we are applying to this header is going to also apply to the index page so anywhere so what is going to happen right now 
what is going to happen i'm just going to repeat this same code i'm just going to copy this code go to my about page paste it here i'm going to paste it here go to my contact page and also paste it here as simple as that and if i go to my about page you notice within the url on my about page i still have my header if i go to what my contact page i'm now on my contact page and i still have my unique header so this is a very simple and unique way in which you can build what a header and then it will work for you but i want to do the same thing to the footer as well so before that let's finish working on our head i want to transform all this into caps so let's go ahead and continue the editing to our header so we have the airlight display we added some padding so now let's add some airlight let's target let's go to our css the same process now we want to target the main link again use the airlight and the link item okay so this we want to transform let's say text transform i want the text transform keyword and set everything to what upper that is what i want and if i load this notice that everything has uh, everything has been transformed to a package so let's also focus and then let's leave it no, right now let's leave it this way and we can also do some editing to our button okay so let's call our button and then do some few formatting so i've called the button and the first thing i want to do is to add some padding to it so i want to add a padding of say i want to add a padding of I want to give the pattern of 9 pixels at the top and bottom and 25 left and right. So let's see that it will have some bit of space to our button to look better now. So our button is not looking better. Let's also remove, uh, let's try to also remove the border and assign our own sheet color to it. So let's say border, let's say we want to set it to none. I'm going to remove the border now and also give a border radius. So let's say border radius and let's say 50 pixels. Okay, so we're going to set this to 50 pixels. Let me type my pixels uh, 50 well and let me just load this. Okay, so I think this is actually looking well, but I want us to actually change the cursor anytime we point our our cursor this will change to a, to a pointed finger okay so let's go back and yes use the keyword cursor it's a cursor cursor and we set it to a pointer okay okay we set this to pointer and this time around if i load my page and i go back here if i load my page and i go back here and notice that it's now showing as a pointer we can easily add a color to it so let me just come down here and and see background color let me give the background color uh, background color and let me just give it a bit of cyan i want to give it a background color of a cyan so this is going to be the background color of my button and i prefer this so the same color is anytime i move my case i want it to hover a bit so i'm going to do the same thing copy the same thing but I will now change the hover i'll add some hover effect so control d to duplicate this control this to duplicate this and now use the hover keyword Sorry, I'm going to use the hover keyword. Okay, and instead of using the cyan, cyan, I'm going to use a different. I prefer a different color. So let me just see. I just maybe I prefer using a gray color now. Okay, so when I go back and I reload this page.
and I move my cursor, you notice everything is not changing. So this app applied a hover effect to this. So anytime we move this, so a user can easily click on the register button and then go ahead and then register anyone at all. We are using the same header property. So you go to any of the pages, this same effect is going to work. So this is a very unique way in which you can build a header and it's going to make your work very easy. So let's go ahead and then try building our contents. Once we are done with our content, we can get on and then finish with our footer. So I want to do something basic for now. And this is going to be part two of this lesson. We will also do part two, try to improve and then build our registration form and other things. So this is going to be the first part of this tutorial. Okay. So let's go ahead and then build our content now. So I'm going to come here and go back to my index page. So these are individual things I'm going to do now. So let me bring a bit of HTML template now. Now over here, notice we don't even need to. So let me just call this home page. Home page. And then over here, let's just create a section. Okay. Let's create a section and within this section, let me just build two articles within my section now. So let me just have first article and then within this article, let me just go ahead and give it each one header. Let me call this one header one and let's generate, let's generate a paragraph and we need some dummy text to work with and we can use the Lorem. We are using, if you are using VSC code editor, you can use the Lorem keyword and maybe I want about 50, 50, 50 words. I'll just hit the tab key and it's going to generate that for me as you can see. So let me load my index page now. I should go back to my home page. You should know that the home page is now in this page. So I'm able to generate some dummy text now. Okay. So let's go ahead and also do build another article now. I can easily duplicate this again. Sorry. Control D will just give me another article. So let me just call this one header two. So meaning let me make this header one okay so i have header one now and header two okay so if i load this you see exactly what i have now i have my second paragraph and article so we can go ahead and then add a bit of padding to this we can easily target because we've included this header keyword over it we can easily target our section over here and then and we can just say let's add a field of padding to it let me add a pattern of let's say 20 pixels 20 pixels and i will just reload this page and i notice we have some padding around this particular text i'm going to go ahead and then include the footer in this tutorial we're going to set this as part one and we're going to improve on this in order to build our subsequent web pages so my main focus is how to use the header and the footer using the include statement. This is actually going to help you and make your life very easy in order to develop a website. So we don't need to go to every page and every page by page and then be changing the header. We just have one simple header, make few changes over there and it's going to reflect on every other page. So let's go ahead and build a footer. So we're going to use the same property and we'll come down to the footer here. And let me just set it up. Let me just also generate a template. I only need a footer here and I'll come down here and say what? Footer. So my footer here, let me generate a paragraph. And within this paragraph, let me use a copyright keyword. Copyright and generate a copyright symbol. I'm going to generate a copyright symbol by using the upper sand, there's an end colon. Okay, the semicolon. And I'll say 2021. 20, and with the pipe symbol and say all rights reserved okay so this is what i have now and i want to just include the css file over here so notice what i'm going to do now i will leave this as as it is because i want to write the same css properties over here I want to just link it over here. Remember this we are linking is we are using, not using the inline CSS. So this is going to be a link keyword. And I will just say CSS. 
and I'll include this because I'm going to write some few CSS properties to form on this. So I can go back and then call my footer, call my footer down here, footer, and I can easily set. Okay, I'll target the paragraph and and everything and set the background to background color to let's see. I prefer some bit of gray color gray color okay and i'll give it a color that's a bag and a color of give a color of black with a black color and i'll say text align text align center i want to center everything so let's load this right now we shouldn't be seeing anything until we link this okay so we're going to use the same include statement and we we'll link it to the index page and other pages as well then this is going to appear on every page as we did for the what the header so let's go back to our page and then what we're going to do is that as we have this property over the header as we've written it we can just use the include statement so this is the include statement we can copy this and anywhere we want to include the header we we'll just go ahead and do that so we need a header on the index page so i can just come down here and then put it over here but i notice this is a header so i need to just change this word footer okay so this is all i need for anywhere i want to use my header my footer sorry so i also need a word a footer over here so i'm just going to put it here and i also need a footer on my contact page and i'm basically what I'm going to put this over here if i come down here once again i load this i should see what my footer as expected let's go ahead and add a bit of property or pardon to this footer okay so let's go to the style sheet now and then see let's give the pattern of 20 pesos so i'm going to say pardon and i'll call i'll give the pattern of 20 pesos okay so if I go back and reload this page, I think this is better now. So this actually is very simple and a unique web page. And if I go to my about page, you see that I'm having this on my about page. If I go to contact page, I have this as well. But I want us to know that we are on about page and I want us to also know that we are on a contact page. So let me just put a simple information over there. Remember to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to turn on the notification bell in order to get update anytime we upload a new content i'm going to improve on this website and get a, going to get a standard website i'm going to do the part two of this tutorial so stay tuned turn on the notification bell in order to get alert anytime i upload a new content i'll create a registration form and also a login form as well so what i'm going to do i want us to know if you're on about page okay and also on the contact page so let me just go on these pages and then do a few a few updates so i want us to come down here and let me just include each one header and say about page let me see welcome to about page about page so let me just copy okay let me just put in each a paragraph lois the lorem and generate some 25 i think i've made a lot of, i've created a lot of paragraph let's copy the same thing and let's also have the same thing on our contact page so let's put it over here and let's say welcome to our contact we just want to know where we are okay we just want to know where we are on our page we want to be sure of what we've done so we'll go ahead and then build a contact form and subsequent video and improve on this so i can easily use the form keyword let's see let's let me just create a simple form so let me see form i'm going to i'm not going to put any action for now and let me use a label uh, label and let me say user name and let me just ask the person for user name okay and i also need the person to let me give a form to the person in order for the person to type in something so let me say input and we will leave it for like let's add a break couple of break and we will go ahead and also let's duplicate this and change this to what password 
so let's see let's call this one password okay and with because this is password we need to set this to password because we want people to see the figures or numbers as a type so this is going to be decent let's also include the submit button so we can also see input we call this one submit and let's give a value let's say sign up or register so let's say the value is going to go let's just use a submit keyword for now so let's go now and check our various pages we are on what this is our what home page this is our about page so you notice that we now are welcome to about page we have that if you come back here contact page so you know we are out on our contact page as simple as that. we have the submit button in a subsequent lesson we're going to learn how we can easily use css to format and create a very nice and a unique contact page and set it up to the standard so we have our footer header we use this simple keyword and remember we have Remember, we have several web pages. We can easily use that simple include statement to embed this header and the footer. So, anytime we make any change, it's going to reflect on each and every page. Thank you so much for enjoying this tutorial. Remember to share, hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe and also turn on the notification bell. I'm going to have amazing content right here on this channel for you. Thank you so much. So, like, come your way another day stay safe bye bye